So hello everyone, my name is Leonhard Rannerbaume. I'm a PhD candidate at the Technical University of Munich in the group around Professor Michael Bader. Our group is called Hardware Aware Algorithms and Software for High Performance Computing. And I will introduce to you today the X-Hype engine that I've been working on for the past four and a half years and show you um, some results that we generated in the field of computational seismology. I want to start uh, with our funding statement. So the XI project started as an EU Horizon 2020 project in the Fed HPC call towards exascale high performance computing and then received follow up funding through the Cheese project. So in the Cheese project it is one of 10 European solid earth applications that are prepared for upcoming pre and exascale supercomputers. Um, so this is the project where we are currently working on the XAP engine. Um, working on the XAP engine are, we, we have our PI Michael Bader, and then we have five core developers. Uh, these are Anne Reinhardt, which is a professor at Durham University. And then we have four PhD candidates at uh, the TU Munich, um, Jean-Mathieu Gaillard, um, here from the left, then Leonard Rannerbauer, which would be me, Philipp Samfas, and Lukas Krenz. So what is ExaHype? Um, the concept of ExaHype has been adapted from what is known as a game engine, but in our case for hyperbolic PDEs. So instead of having to read to develop and implement numerical schemes for every single model, we provide a finished framework for interdisciplinary research teams um, to implement and realize a scalable model relatively quickly. Um, our system is based on Cartesian meshes on which we efficiently on which we efficiently solve hyperbolic PDEs with an high order Ada discontinuous Galerkin scheme and subcellular technique. Our, pro our project focuses on two application areas. The first one is astrophysics. Here we use uh, the Einstein equations to solve neural star merger events. Um, and on the other hand, computational seismology. So this is the one that I'm going to talk about today. Our engine is designed to solve first order hyperbolic partial differential equations of this form here. Um, so what you usually have is a state vector Q, uh, which you want to solve <clears throat> for, some, um, for some collection of physical laws, which are derived in these flux terms or non-conservative flux terms or source terms. So for in computational seismology, for example, we solve for the linear elastic wave equation, which models the relation between particle velocity and um, stress and stress on volumes in a, in a material. And uh, this delta here, for example, that models point sources, um, which we use to initialize earthquakes. Um, the x engine consists of four core parts. The first is the high order Ada discontinuous Galerkin scheme, which we use to reach arbitrary high convergence in space and time through a so called predictor corrector scheme. Um, and also this scheme has shown to be very efficient in terms of uh, time and with that also energy to solution. Um, one critical problem that you usually have with hyperbolic PDEs is that um, even though you have smooth initial conditions, shocks can generate. And this is why we provide this finite vol volume limiting scheme to avoid what is called Gibbs phenomenon, which can lead to instabilities in, in your code, in your solution. We use code generation for hardware aware code optimization of performance critical kernels. So here we focus on um, the architectures you you find on the on the average SuperMOOC system. So right now we focus on uh, on the Intel Skylake architecture and what is coming afterwards. Um, and finally, meshes are generated through a tree structured dynamic adaptive mesh um, refinement approach. Yes, so this allows us dynamic, dynamically refined meshes. The architecture of the engine looks like this. Um, from the point of a user, you have to define a exahype specification file. So here you put everything, um, here, here you put in all general definitions of your hyperbolic PDE, like its dimensionality, if it's linear or nonlinear, the order of the ADDG method, um, or how your state vector looks, for example. From this, 
a specification file, we generate a C++ interface, um, optimized core routines for the hardware kernels, also glue code to the Piano framework. Um, yeah, a user can then implement his hyperbolic PDE in the C++ interface. So this is where you put your flux functions, initial conditions, boundary conditions, and so on. Um, yeah, and with the glue code to the Piano framework, which provides hybrid and hybrid MPI and TBB parallelization, and also acts as a um, as a um, mesh manager for dynamic adaptive mesh refinement, you get a you already have a running application. You already have a running model. <clears throat> so I mentioned in the beginning that um, we focus on applications from astrophysics and seismology. However, this engine has already been applied to a wide variety of different models. So we used it for the Euler equations in gas dynamics. Then we have um, tsunami simulations with the shallow water equation. So for um, this year's supercomputing, we submitted a paper where we do uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo simulations with our ExaHype engine. Um, and tsunamis. Then we reproduced cloud formation processes with the compressive Navier-Stokes equations. Um, as I already mentioned, gravitational waves with the Einstein equations in vacuum. For computational seismology, we have right now we have four core applications. Um, the first one are curvilinear meshes for the elastic wave equation. Then we have a diffuse interface approach, perfectly matching layers for the elastic wave equation, and the gordonov peshko romensky model. Right, so in computational um, seismology, the first problem that we addressed with, with our engine is the so-called meshing problem. So for geophysical applications, what you usually require are meshes that represent features of a given topography, like fault systems or certain mountain areas, certain hills. Um, and if you want to run different models, um, their generation usually takes up a significant amount of time. Also, the problem is that you very um, also a problem is that you very often have to rely on commercial software, um, for which you have to pay in that case. So what we did is that we developed two different appro approaches that avoid this meshing problem. The first one is an approach with curvilinear meshes, which comes with automated mesh generation, and the second one is a diffuse interface approach, um, which completely avoids mesh generation. So first the curvilinear mesh method. Um, here we map each single element from our from our computational Cartesian mesh onto a boundary, boundary fitting curvilinear mesh. Um, so this requires um, initial mesh generation, which we automized for our field of applications um, with, a, with a simple KD tree approach. So this allows us to divide our computational domain in planes and then um, map each plane onto a fault system, for example, or a topography. For this, we have to transform flux and source terms with the Jacobian. And uh, one big problem of this method is that the eigenvalues and with that the time step size highly depend on the norm of the transformation. The second approach is the diffuse interface approach. So here, topography is not modeled as um, modeled by the mesh, but by a character characteristic function alpha. And this alpha is just a function between one and zero, and models. And for, for one, it models a solid medium, and for zero, it models vacuum. Then we have a transition zone between one and zero. And at the boundaries, um, the fluxes we use are no longer linear. Um, the whole thing has the advantage that it completely avoids the problem of mesh generation. On the other hand, um, the whole PDE becomes non-linear, which makes it more expensive for us to compute. Um, also very nice is that the eigenvalues and that the time step size are now independent from topography. So what do we use these methods for? Um, the first topic we address is the analysis of scattering effects. So here we simulate an earthquake in the area around, around the Zugspitze. So the Zugspitze should be placed here somewhere. Um, and what we try to find out is in how far the complexity of the topography influence the frequency content of seismograms that we, that we measure. 
So what we do is that we filter this topography for certain cutoff frequencies. So here you can see three different cutoff frequencies and with an increase of the cutoff frequency we get a more complex topography and then we try to conclude on the frequency content um, in those coda waves here. So these are six seismograms for six different um, cutoff frequencies with increase in complexity and well as you can see coda waves are coda waves of these wave waves here after these waves here after the second peak and as you can see with this increased um, complexity we get we get way more scattering in those waves yes and this is something we try to quantify with our models the second method is um, a perfectly matched layers method um, so this is work by Kenneth Duro, which um, yeah, which developed this method together with, with me. The problem here is that the absorbing boundary conditions are not working perfectly and can disturb your seismogram. So this is what you can see here in green. Um, for example, this seismogram should be zero, but um, as you see, we have those oscillations in the, in the green seismogram and also here in the end. And what we did is that we developed a provably numerically stable uh, method that um, perfectly absorbs reflections from the boundary. So this is the red seismogram you can see here. So the seismogram is zero as it's supposed to be and also you don't have those reflections here in the end. Um, we are the first ones to develop this method and the ExaHype engine allows us to do this because it's um, it's very simple to add new models. Um, we perform multi-physics dynamic rupture simulations. So instead of using a simple point source to initialize an earthquake, we prescribe the material failure on a fault and initialize the earthquake with that. Um, here you can see a contour plot um, of a very famous community benchmark for this these dynamic rupture simulations, which is called TPV29, uh, 28, I'm sorry. Um, yes, and right now we are working on a dynamic rupture simulation in the North Icelandic region. So this would be here the fault on which we want to prescribe material failure to initialize an earthquake. But this is this is work in progress. So and finally, um, we also develop completely new models for dynamic rupture simulations. Here we have the gordonov peshkov romensky model, which uh, models continuous damage and freely evolving dynamic rupture. So instead of prescribing the rupture process, as we do in, in the example I just showed you, and we extend our model to simulate the rupture on its own. And this gives a high, us a higher detail of the process as we model the process itself, the rupture process, and um, for example, includes the secondary cracks, which you can see here. Um, so you usually wouldn't have those um, in, a, in, a, in a traditional dynamic rupture simulation. So finally, I want to talk about the performance of the method. Here we see hybrid scaling for the diffuse interface method and the curvilinear method. Um, so hybrid scaling is meant in the sense that we show uh, weak scaling as well as strong scaling in one plot. So weak scaling, um, you can see weak scaling along this line here. And for the diffuse interface method, we get this pretty much perfectly, while for the curvilinear method, we only have it here at a, a few sweet spots. And this is caused by the fact that the diffuse interface method has a very high load um, per element as nonlinear method, and the curvilinear method has a very uh, has a rather re relatively low load per element. Right, and with the high load, it's easier for us to parallelize to get this weak scaling, um, which we won't get for the curvilinear method. Um, we see this. Uh, what we see is that we can reach more degrees of freedom per second for the curvilinear method. So here we have 16 billion compared to 1 billion degrees of freedom per second on 731. This should be nodes, nodes on SuperMOOC NG. Right, so this is the performance we can reach. So I've presented you an engine with which we can solve a wide variety of different applications. And this comes with a lot of challenges for the engine development. So we have to implement a lot of functionality which has to be tested. We have a high effort, effort for software integration and we have to pursue multiple targets for parallelization and optimization. So what we do in ExaHype is that we have a task-based paradigm for unpredictable workloads. 
we have a producer consumer pattern um, on on a um, shared memory level um, and then uh, we have a communication avoiding traversal scheme that minimizes data transfers and finally uh, we, we have our code generation that is tailored um, to the required kernels of the hyperbolic PDE. You can download our engine at um, exahype.org and we also can afford a second homepage where we uh, can show where we show statistics, galleries and publications. And I want to close my presentation with um, with uh, uh, four of our most important references and um, I hoped I, I hope I was able to uh, describe you the exahype engine in 15 minutes. And um, now to your questions.